Rita Elenin ha sido relacionada con toda clase de mitos catastrofistas. A partir de que hubo quien pronosticó el terremoto de Japón por la alineación del cometa Elenin con la Tierra y el Sol. El día 8 de marzo del 2011, la usuaria de YouTube, Nueve Nania, publicó este video en el que comenta que el 27 de febrero del 2010, el cometa Elenin, la Tierra y el Sol se alinearon. I really want to show you something I think is very important here. This is February 27th, 2010. This is the date that astrophysicist Michio Kaku told us that the Earth's axis shifted, which caused the chilly earthquake. De manera que Nueve Nania, tres días antes, advirtió que durante la próxima alineación ocurriría un terremoto en Japón. Now let's see when the alignment is this year. Could be March 11th through the 15th, I'm thinking. So I would recommend that if you're living in a fault zone area, take a vacation before March 11th. El 9 de marzo del 2011, Nueve Nania publicó otra advertencia citando cinco ciudades, entre ellas Tokio. Here's the tectonic plates. He said Tokio, San Francisco, Los Angeles. Mexico City and Tehran. They're all on the edges of the tectonic plates. Y el 11 de marzo ocurrió el terrible sismo de 8.9 grados Richter que desató un tremendo tsunami. ¿Acaso fue una coincidencia? ¿O efectivamente estas alineaciones tienen influencia en la Tierra? Observe con atención, en el simulador de la NASA se visualiza cuándo acontecerá la próxima alineación del Sol, la Tierra y el cometa Elenin. Será el 27 de septiembre del 2011. Faltan 100 días para saber qué ocurrirá en esta fecha. A partir de la predicción del terremoto de Japón, en la Internet se desataron toda clase de profecías del cometa Elenin. A la mayoría de ellas no les encontramos mayor fundamento. Lo que se conoce científicamente es que se trata de un nuevo cometa. Su máximo acercamiento al Sol será el 10 de septiembre del 2011, a 72 millones de kilómetros. A partir de esta fecha, por la actividad solar, el cometa podría crecer y tornarse muy espectacular. Para entonces podría ser visible con binoculares y mejor aún con telescopios. Of, uh, all of you in our NASA family about emergency preparedness. Um, NASA recently participated in a FEMA exercise called Eagle Horizon that was a part of a continuity of operations and government exercise that we do annually. And I became aware of some things that concern me about our family preparedness and I wanted to talk to you very briefly. You know, we in NASA, we're an incredibly unique organization. We're the only agency in the federal government that's responsible for the safety and well-being of people not only here on Earth, but uh, off this planet. So um, my experience in the astronaut office, uh, my experience as an active duty Marine, uh, always talked about the importance of family preparedness and to make sure that we had a viable family support program. And I have concerns that ours right now is not uh, as good as it ought to be. So what I'm asking all of you in the NASA family, whether you're out on the West Coast, here on the East Coast, along the Gulf Coast, uh, up on the, the, you know, the Great Lakes. Think about the, the natural disasters that could occur in your area. Think about attacks that could come like 9-11 from outside forces and talk to your family about your work and what they need to do to prepare for the unforeseen. Uh, develop a family preparedness plan in your house. Uh, have an emergency supply kit available. Most people who live along the, the, the Gulf Coast always have an emergency kit for hurricanes. I, I'm not sure whether people out on the West Coast think about uh, earthquakes and the like, but have an emergency supply kit at your home. Think about a family communications plan. Where are we going to meet if an emergency occurs and we're all over, the, all over town? Uh, what are we going to do? Are we going to call each other on the cell phone? Just think about those things. If you have pets, think about a pet preparedness plan. How are you going to make sure that they're taken care of when you're spread all over the place? Uh, and then f if you have family members who have special needs, special needs preparedness. The most important asset uh, for us to successfully complete our mission is that our people, our families mainly, are taken care of so that we can come to work and feel good that if an, if an emergency arises, our families are going to be taken care of. So I would ask you again, sit with your families, think about what you would do in an emergency situation. 
I hope that you'll embrace and support the Family Preparedness Program as we all get better prepared to deal with these emergencies. Know your stuff. You know, know what it is that you're going to do. Know what it is that you're, you want your family to do if an emergency arises. But most of all, be prepared.